Welcome back everyone to the ORCAD X layout tutorial series. We are now on the last video where we're going to be talking about manufacturing files. Again, my name is Adam Fuchs. I am a product engineer at Canis Design Systems. And in this video, we're going to be exporting some Gerber files and also looking at some ways to create documentation using the new live doc feature. So let's go ahead and get started. If you've been following along, you can continue to work on your board. If you want to download the board in its current state, look for the how to underscore manufacturing.brd file and go ahead and download it and follow along. So we've pretty much finished everything we need to do on this board. I've made probably some small adjustments and due to that, you can see that my shape islands are showing as out of date. I can quickly refresh those just by using the properties panel on the right side. And then we still have the one DRC error, which is this package to place keep in spacing. This is something that we're okay with because the component is meant to hang over the board just a little bit. Again, this is a USB type C connector and we want it just to stick out a little bit. What we can do is while selecting the DRC on the properties panel on the right side, we can wave it and add a comment. And I can just say, this is meant to hang over by 1.1 millimeter. Let's just verify that it's 1.1 millimeter. Well, not sure why it doesn't want to uh, do the measurement for me, but X 22.9771 and X minus 1.1. So yep, we got about 1.1 millimeters there. In this case, it doesn't matter too much what the comment is. The issue is now waived. And anyone that opens this board and wants to look at the DRCs will also be able to see that the DRC is waived. You know, what the comment was, who waived it. And then if at some point this component gets moved, then this DRC will be remade. And you can wave it again if you need to. Okay, now for manufacturing, Everything for manufacturing and the outputs of your board is done through the manufacturing tab at the top. Go ahead and select export to manufacturing and you will see a new pop-up with all the different options available. Now, if this is your first time exporting outputs for a PCB board, this might be a little daunting and a little too much information, but for the most part, you can either use the IPC 2581 output or the fabrication Gerber and ORCAD X layout has pretty much set everything else up for you. So unless you need to do something specific, go ahead and just continue on with the defaults. And then you can view those in a Gerber viewer of your choice. If you are an advanced user and need to make some changes, selecting any of these options, for example, if we're going to export Gerber files, selecting the artwork, for example, allows us to choose the scale factor, whether or not we need leading or trailing zeros. These are just some things that your manufacturer might, may or may not require. Same thing if I select NC drill options, you can see that the settings appear on the right side. And if you need to include anything else in the fabrication Gerber output, simply select it from this dropdown, for example, a bill of materials report and click the plus and you'll see that it'll get added to this Fabrication Gerber output dropdown. You'll notice that in the Fabrication Gerber output, we have this artwork section. Artwork being the layers in our board, which need to be translated into this Gerber format. What these actually stand for, the external conductor, internal conductor, etc., can be configured through the configure artwork films button at the bottom left. And this brings up another pop-up. Again, this should all be set up for you by default by ORCAD X layout. However, if you need to make some adjustments, maybe for example, for the silkscreen layer, you, you added another custom layer and you need to make sure that it gets included. You can include it by simply selecting, for example, your drawing format title block and then you'll add it and it'll get added to the silkscreen artwork layer which would then appear here 
But as I mentioned, all of these are pretty much already set by default for us. So we can just hit OK. And then let's go ahead and export the Gerber files. Select export. Say yes. Once the export is done, you can verify that everything went okay by selecting view log in the bottom right here. It'll bring up a nice little text file and you can scroll down and see that it successfully generated all the artwork, the NC route, the net list, factual report, even the bill of materials that we added was also successfully generated. And then these are the artwork layers that it generated for us. So we can go ahead and close that. And let's go ahead and quickly just inspect what our output files look like. So in the same folder as where your layout resides, you should see a archive. Actually, depending on if you have this great archive selected or not, you will either see an archive or all the files simply in the same folder. I greatly recommend choosing create archive as it'll keep everything in a single zip file for you. You can go ahead and inspect what's inside of here. And you'll notice that there's all of these art files. These are your Gerber layers. So we have our top layer. There's our bottom layer. Let's go ahead and sort by type. So these are all of our artwork files. We have the DRL. We also have some IPC logs. We have the PDFs up here. There's the bomb report. We can open this in a text file. And you'll see that we have some basic bomb information. Now, bills of materials are normally better suited for generation from the schematic side, so in ORCAD X but it's just something that we selected in our output and we have it here. And yeah, so you can take this zip file and send it off to your manufacturer and that should more or less contain everything you need for the board to get manufactured. I myself will be getting this board manufactured just to make sure everything works okay. and We'll see how it goes. One other thing that you might also want to do is generate some assembly drawings. To do so, just head into the manufacturing menu and select live dock. Now I happen to already have one for this file, so I'm going to go ahead and delete it and let's create a new one. Now live dock is basically a document editor that has some pre-generated outputs that we can place on it. For example, notice here that we have a stack up table, which shows all of the layers in our stack up. Here is a summary of the different drills in our board. For example, we only have through holes that go from top to bottom layer. Here is a preview of the top layer copper. And each of these can be selected and you can choose, for example, the scale if you want it rotated, what the title of it is. And then any of these views that you see on the left side here, for example, we can add the second layer can also be dragged and dropped onto this page. Now, by default, this starts on a C size page. If you need to adjust the size of the page, go ahead and do so on the right side here in the properties, as well as changing the page name. If you need to add another page at the bottom here, there's a floating toolbar where you can click the add page button and you should see that there's already a second page called assembly at the bottom here which has our assembly top layer and we can go ahead and expand that and what this includes is actually the board outline as well as the assembly top layers sort of pre-generated or predefined for us. 
If, for example, I want to include other layers in the assembly top view, I can go into the, let's deselect this first. I can go into the visibility tab in the left-hand sided panel. I select my view. In this case, it's the assembly top view. And then I have some options for which uh, different layers I actually want to enable or disable for this view. So for example, I can turn on my silkscreen top, the Orchid X layout tutorial board, the little silkscreen that we drew earlier appears. Or if I want to include, for example, the top layer pins, I can do so by selecting that. And one additional thing that you can do is also add some dimensions and drawings and different notes to your assembly document. If we select this option here, this is the linear dimension. Notice that it'll snap to corners. You can also turn on snapping for other objects such as segment midpoints, pin centers, etc. So we can snap, snap, and get a linear dimension that we can then, by selecting, adjust the properties for, for example, set it to size 20. Um, let's make it in millimeters. Change the line width. Make it maybe um, orange. And let's add some trailing zeros. And then we can set this as default so that if we add another linear dimension, then it should follow that same format. There we go. So you can use the different options. There's linear, there is ordinate, there is angular dimensions you can add. You can also place general drawings of arcs, shapes, lines, polygons, texts. You can also paste images into your live document. Anything that you would need to help whoever is assembling the board, assemble it for you successfully. I'm going to go ahead and close this. One thing I want to mention is that LiveDoc always exists inside of your design. So at any point, you can always go back to manufacturing LiveDoc and open back up your LiveDoc and make edits. If I make a change to the board, let's just say, for example, that let's move this diode over here. I move this diode, I should see those changes automatically reflected in my live document. And there it goes, it refreshed and the change has come through. So you don't have to worry about regenerating it every time, the tool automatically handles that for you. Let's go ahead and undo that. Come back to live doc and there it goes. So feel free to play around more with LiveDoc. There's a lot of different options and things that you can do. As you can see, there's some different views and, and charts that you can add. One last thing that I want to talk about for fabrication outputs is you go into file, there's an option for 3D export. And what this allows you to do is export a 3D view of your PCB board so that other designers, whether they're 3D CAD designers or maybe someone with uh, graphic design experience, they can take that 3D file and, and do whatever they need to do with it. So in the 3D export, there's a couple different options. The most important one being the output type. So there's step, which is fairly generic and accepted by almost every tool that I know of. There's also PDF if you're sending it to someone who doesn't have access to a CAD tool. And then there's a bunch of different options for you know, what units you want to use, whether or not you want to show holes in your 3D output, so mechanical holes, vias, and then which layers you want to include as well. And one thing I do want to mention is for large boards especially, once you start adding things like through-hole pins or vias, the 3D files can start to grow quite large in size. So just be aware of that as you are exporting these and make sure that whoever is accessing that file is aware of maybe, hey, I'm sending a large 3D exported file with a lot of different geometries in it.
that is about it. So we have now created a board, routed it, created some manufacturing files, and they're ready to be exported to a board manufacturer. Hopefully you've enjoyed these videos. And if you have any questions or comments or suggestions, please feel free to comment. Thank you so much.